I'm not going to pretend this is easy. You're considering the health of one of the most precious things in your life right now, your unborn child. And the last thing you need is conflicting information and that's what you're finding everywhere. It's normal to be confused, to have unanswered questions, and it's normal to be unsure. Absolutely you need to follow your intuition, but it needs help. So trust your health professionals, the clinical research, and the people you've always turned, for, turned to for advice and support. We will walk this with you whether you decide to get vaccinated or not. There are people sharing misinformation and lies, and they won't. I'm going to cover a few things here, firstly about COVID-19 and pregnancy, how it affects the women who are pregnant differently, and then it's about the vaccine. Much of what we know about the effect of COVID-19 on women and babies comes from research such as this one. This is what's called a living database of outcomes. As more research is published, it's incorporated into this one, and the breadth and the strength of conclusions becomes more accurate. We know that pregnant women are at greater risk of being admitted to hospital with severe disease when they catch it. We know that if you catch COVID-19 while you're pregnant, that your baby has a higher chance of being born early, and that both of you are more likely to be admitted to an intensive care unit. But what are the numbers? These relate to catching COVID-19 in pregnancy. Two thirds of women will only have mild symptoms. One third of women will need to be admitted to hospital because of moderate or severe disease. And one in 10 of those will need admission to the intensive care unit. And that can involve either prolonged treatment with high flow oxygen or being put into an induced coma. The risk of stillbirth and premature birth double with COVID-19 infection. So yes, for most people, COVID-19 will be a mild disease, but for many, it won't be. What are the risk factors that make severe disease more likely? We know increased maternal age and higher body mass index make it more likely. We know that having medical complications either beforehand, like diabetes or kidney disease or high blood pressure, can affect it. And also new onset diseases within the pregnancy, such as preeclampsia. What about Delta variant? We know that it's more easily transmitted, but does it pose a higher risk for pregnancy aside from that greater chance of just catching it? Now the UK have been looking at this through their obstetric surveillance system. And one in four women admitted into the intensive care in the first wave were pregnant. With the Alpha variant, that increased to one in three admissions. And so far, the evidence shows that with Delta variant, just under one half of ICU admissions are pregnant women. So yes, unfortunately, there is evidence that um, everything I've spoken about is likely to be more worse with the Delta variant. So let's talk about vaccination. Does it work? If you get vaccinated, are you and your baby protected from COVID-19 and its complications? The UK obstetric surveillance system have been looking at this since February the 1st, 2021. And of the 742 women admitted to hospital with symptomatic disease, only four had received a dose of the vaccine and none had received two doses. And this was at a time when 55,000 women in the UK had received a vaccine. We know that the vaccines make it less likely that you'll be admitted to hospital, that you'll need to receive complex treatments or be admitted to intensive care. But what about the safety profile of the vaccine? We know if you're trying to get pregnant that it has no impact on sperm count, erectile function or testicular inflammation. We know that in IVF cycles, there's no evidence of reduced egg count or embryo transfer success. All of the reproductive medicine societies across Europe and America suggest vaccination when eligible. There is no need to delay fertility treatments due to vaccination. They do recommend to avoid vaccination within three days of an IVF procedure in case of usual side effects. So a common question is, was the vaccine rushed? Yes, it reached us more quickly than any vaccine has done before, but the parts that were hurried weren't the safety checks. When you try and build a house, what are the things that hold you up? You'll know that coordinating everyone, lining up the electrician to get their work done before the floor guy can do what he needs to do, coordinating the plumber and the cabinet installer for the bathroom, the builder with the tiler in the kitchen. If money was no object, you'd have all of these people on standby, no waiting, everything efficient and fast. And not only that, because you're throwing money at it, you'd have the best builder, maybe two. They'd know all about safety requirements and regulations and certification. These would be issued quickly 
and any problems identified first time round. How much more quickly could you build a house if everything was coordinated like that? And because it was built quickly, it wouldn't be unsafe. The exact same regulations and requirements were met. The greatest available experience for use in pregnancy is with the Pfizer one, and that's why it's recommended in Australia. How many pregnant women have received a COVID-19 vaccine? I've talked about this on my page last week. Pregnant women were not included in the original effectiveness and safety studies, but currently more than 130,000 women around the world have received the vaccination in pregnancy. The scientific research and the mand mandatory reporting databases have found no increase in pregnancy complications of miscarriage or stillbirth. It doesn't affect breastfeeding or pass into the breast milk. The mother's antibodies have been found in breast milk, and that's a common way that babies gain protection from infections. The vaccine is effective, and it's the best way to prevent severe COVID-19 infection, whether you're planning pregnancy, pregnant, or currently breastfeeding. Pregnant and breastfeeding women are already routinely and off safely being offered other vaccinations in pregnancy to protect against influenza, whooping cough, and many of these vaccines also protect their babies from infection as well. These vaccines, like the COVID-19 ones, are non-live vaccines and they're considered safe in pregnancy. It's true that we don't have safety data about children of mothers who were vaccinated. And in a pandemic, unfortunately, we have to go with the best available evidence to make decisions. What I can tell you is that no vaccination has been found to cause birth defects or cause developmental issue for newborns or children. Even the ones that could theoretically pass on disease, such as the live vaccines, actually don't. Now, like I said at the beginning, these aren't easy decisions, but the evidence of harm to individuals and their babies from COVID-19 is strong, and the evidence of vaccination protecting both mother and baby are clear, and evidence of harm hasn't been found. It's normal to be anxious, and of course you need to speak with your own care provider to come up with a decision that's right for you. Thanks for listening, and I'll post some links to additional helpful information in the caption and on my website.